as I now declare. Before the spring forth, I tell you of them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Dear friends, will you please stand as you're able for the reading of the gospel? The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. This short story, but very familiar one, that is the center focus of our time today. From Matthew chapter 3. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan River to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then John consented. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. Dear friends, this is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Well, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Oh, my goodness, that was awful. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you. I mean, I thought the cold would have woken you up, especially quickly this morning. I would say, say um, uh, I did hear from a little birdie that we have a uh, birthday boy in our midst today, one, one by the name of Larry Blakeborough who's sitting right over there. And so I think we ought to sing happy birthday to him since it's the day of his birth, huh? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Larry. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Larry. Good job. Happy birthday to Larry. (laughs) <laughs> well, everyone, will you bow your heads and maybe open your hands like this on your, on your lap as we pray. Let us pray. Dear Jesus, you were baptized so we could hold something so deep and holy in common with you. In God, you are beloved. In God, we are beloved also. So in humility, we pray to you today with great thanksgiving and an absolutely exuberant joy over being your children. In the name of Christ, who was first baptized so that we might be. Amen. Well, I'm going to start and end with this today, so you're going to hear it now and then you'll hear it right at the end today. Jesus' baptism is meant to make you and me Think about our own baptisms. Okay? Jesus' baptism is meant to make you and me think about our own baptisms. I don't think we think about our baptisms often enough. Jesus didn't need to be baptized. He's the Son of God, and as all Christians believe, fully God in every single way. And he is also, God is a human who comes to us. And yet, in that role and experience, also fully understands all of our human needs and experiences. So when Jesus says, I am doing this to fulfill all righteousness, he's using a relational term. It's the word righteousness. Righteousness means being aligned with God. Like a plumb line would line up a two-by-four if you're building a wall. That's what the word righteousness means, being aligned with God. Truly in alignment with God's will, God's heart, God's mind. 
So Jesus is saying, this is what our baptisms do for us also. Put us in alignment with God. To align and then every day after, realign us as we remember our baptisms. That's why I said I don't think we think about this often enough. Ever after we realign ourselves or are realigned, as we remember that, our baptisms have put us into alignment with God's will and heart and mind. And then at the end of this beautiful short story in the third chapter of Matthew, God declares in Jesus' baptism, this is my beloved, and I am well pleased with him, my beloved. So, are you with me? Jesus' baptism and everything about it is meant to make us think of our own baptisms, okay? And then this means that we are meant to hear God say very directly to each one of us who are brought close to God and God's will and heart and mind in our baptisms and every day thereafter, you are my beloved. Good children's sermon today. You are my beloved. And what does God say with you? I'm well pleased. (laughs) I am really pleased with you as a child of God. So bookending every part and experience and day of our lives, when we get up in the morning and when we go to bed at night, should be us recalling God, saying to us as God's baptized children, you are my beloved, and I'm well pleased with you. I'm really pleased with you, no matter what. What if if you were a parent right now, or a grandparent visiting, I suppose, too, What if you ended every night after you've said your bedtime prayers with the kids as they're being tucked in by making the sign of the cross on their forehead and saying, you are God's beloved and and ours too. And we're well pleased with you. We love you so much. At the end of our worship today, if you saw it in the bulletin, we will sing a most beautiful baptismal hymn, Thy Holy Wings, O Savior. Here's how the first line goes. Thy holy wings, O Savior, spread gently over me and let me rest securely through good and ill in thee. O be my strength and portion, my rock and hiding place. And let my every moment, every moment, be lived within thy grace. This is our grateful prayer. As we remember our baptisms, that we get to hold in common with our Savior Jesus himself. You've just got to imagine that. We don't get to hold much in common like that in its fullness with Jesus, but here we do. Our baptisms, the beginning of our lives. This hymn today at the end is meant to so solidify in you the grace, the love of God in which you live every moment, no matter what that moment is. This hymn is meant to say to you on your way out the door every week as you begin a new week, you are my beloved. And with you, I am well pleased. So let me share today three vignettes with you that hopefully speak to your life as a baptized child of God who maybe now senses a little more deeply the common bond of belovedness that you share with Jesus, your Savior himself, and the wings of grace under which God says you live every moment of your life, no matter what that moment is. Okay? First, across the street from the Martin Luther King Jr. Memorial in Atlanta, Georgia, there's a profound bronze statue that I saw there some years ago when I had a group of kids at the National Youth Gathering in Atlanta. It's the statue of a black man 
with his face lifted to the heavens. Kind of like Jesus in the gospel today. Lifted to the heavens, holding his brand new baby child high above his head in the air toward God. The statue is called Behold. And it celebrates the ancient African ritual of a parent lifting a newborn child toward God and crying out, Behold, the only thing greater than myself. The only thing greater than myself. When I saw this for the first time, I I wondered what it was that was so much greater than us about a helpless, dependent little newborn in the arms of its parent. Well, isn't what is greater just that? That that helpless little newborn needs to be and is in the arms, in the loving, strong, protective, and graceful arms of a mother or a father, but also within the wings within the wings, the holy wings of a Savior. It's about faith that God is the source of us flourishing in all our dependency upon God. This is what we do in baptism. We hold our newborns, most often newborns, we don't wait till they're 12 usually or whenever they can make the decision for, their, for themselves. We don't usually do that as Lutherans. No, we want to get them right into the presence and the grace of our loving God right away so they can hear and feel through us as parents but also through us as a congregation like a good big parent together. You are God's beloved and our beloved And with you, God is well-pleased. And with you, we are well-pleased. No matter how your life unfolds then, from that moment forward, you're in God's love, dear child. And you're in our love as well. Count on it. This is what's greater than us. Our faith, our confidence, that we live every moment together under God's holy, protective, loving wings. Hmm? All right, that was number one. Here's number two. When my middle child, Anya, was about three or four, about that age, she got herself into a little three or four-year-old trouble one day. And Anya was the one who got into that more often than the other two kids. Always trying to be a good, smart, intentional parent. I sat her down on the steps at home so I could see eye level with her with an age-appropriate amount of seriousness (laughs) for a three- or four-year-old. And I said, Anya, why did you do that? And she looked at me really earnestly. And she said, because I did. (laughs) I said, but Anya, why did you do that? One more time, she replied, because I did. Well, what do you say to that? So by now, I'm getting a little unnerved. One more time. Three for the Trinity. I said, Anya, why did you do that? But Daddy, she said as tears started to come out of her eyes, That's the way God made me. (laughs) She pulled the God card at age three. Come on. (laughs) All I could do was pull her into a big hug, you know, as her dad and eventually say, Anya, you can't do that anymore. But I still love you. This is baptismal life. This is being aligned with the will and the heart and the mind of God. This is love, God's love, before, after, and over and above everything else. This is Martin Luther's law 
Anya, why did you do that? You can't do that anymore. But then it's also the forgiving and renewing gospel. So let's try again differently, and I love you more than anything. Don't you ever forget that. Remember, everyone, you are God's beloved. That's particular. And God is well pleased with you over and above everything else. And so are, beloved, all the other people in your life. No matter who they are, and no matter what each particular moment brings for them and for you. Baptismal life always calls us to be realigned with God's heart, with God's sacrificial and overarching grace toward us and toward all people. No exceptions. All right, here's the third vignette, final story. I've told this before, but it's so good for all of us here at St. John's Lutheran in Lakeville, Minnesota to hear and have some memory about. Helen drank fight. Many of you remember Helen, who died last year in her mid-90s, told this story about how she was standing back there at the baptismal font, just like Pastor Kim and the kids were today, with her grandson one day. And she was talking about that huge metal sculpture that's hanging from the ceiling. So if if you're not acquainted with it, just look at it real quickly back there. It's unique, it's beautiful and very unique. Well, she was t- he was asking about the sculpture. This, what is that, Grandma? And she said, well, those lower prickly pegs that are sticking down, that's the crown of thorns that Jesus wore on the cross when he died for our sins. And then those big gold spikes, they're even bigger, twice the size or more up there that go upward, those are the crown of glory that Jesus wore when he rose from the dead and showed us he is victorious over sin and death, everything that's below it. Well, her grandson just stood there in awe, just looking up at that big, huge thing. And then he said, Wow, Grandma, Jesus must have been a really big guy. (laughs) Big crowns. Well, he was. He was really big with so much love for all of us that he would give his life for us, for you and me. He was really big, fully aligned with God in righteousness, in truth, in love, and with the alignment that God wants for this world of people, you and me included, who struggle with so much and who truly need and rely on God's help to overcome all of it day by day and and to flourish more. But those of us who also, all of us at times, who can get things so right and can realize who we ultimately are is we hold God's belovedness of us even in common with Christ and Christ's power in us. With God who comes right to us and to all of us together. This isn't just about us as individuals, but it's about the community of God's people and beloved and faith. So we can have God's help, Christ's help, when we navigate and journey through this life that we share every single day. So remember how we started today. Jesus' baptism is meant to make you and me think about our own baptisms. His baptism in the River Jordan is meant to make us realize that we get to share the deepest identity we have. What is it? Child of God. We get to share the deepest identity we have with Jesus, our Savior himself. It's an eternal identity. His baptism is meant to tell us that no matter what each moment of our lives brings, 
especially if it is the most challenging or hard or painful or hopeless-seeming moment when we can't even imagine that there could be a God with us who is good. Every moment of our lives is lived under the wing of God who lets us rest securely with him through good and ill and in God's grace toward us. This is the way God made us. How blessed are we? And you, child of God, in your birth and baptism, are beloved, with whom God is well pleased, over and above everything else. On your way out today, do what the kids did at the children's sermon. Dip your finger, make your way to the font, dip your finger in the baptismal water, make the sign of Jesus' cross on your forehead to remember your baptism again, to remember your alignment with Jesus himself, and to remember the saving, loving, renewing grace of God for you, for your every moment. And for every moment of this world's life that we share together. Thanks be to God.